So the roof design, very similar wording to what we had in the walls, foundations, and slabs. The thing has to be designed so that it can safely sustain all the actions and, and loads that are going to be imposed on it. It's got to be adequately anchored against wind uplift. That's in fact why roofs are tied down, not because you're holding them onto the wall, but you're preventing them from being blown away. It has to be durable and must not allow the penetration of rainwater or any other surface water to its interior. That is the simple requirement of the roof. It, it does not allow the accumulation of any water upon its surface, so flat slabs you will see have been changed from what we are also used to. Okay, section of Science 10400 Part O, lighting and ventilation. The normative references here are not too many. Um, you've got internal lighting because you've got to have artificial lighting, so that's clarified. And parts A, N and T. N is glazing and T is fire. The new space zones and heights of obstructions and boundaries introduced to ensure natural light is achieved. So. What they're referring to here is it's all very well having windows on your building, but you need to be aware of the context. Now it's about being able to get the external light into the building, minimize the impact of having to have daylighting, and you need to be sure that you're not affected by your neighbors or by columns that might be in front of windows, etc. So when you're looking at that in terms of the floor area and the relationship of getting your minimum light and ventilation in terms of the 10% floor area and 5% of openings, you need to make sure that you don't have things in the way. You have to now show all that stuff, and if you do, the window's obviously got to be a little bit bigger. Okay, you deem to satisfy the regulations where you comply with the part O. All rooms have to be provided with artificial lighting where the material size of opening, time of day, or other impact do not permit sufficient daylight to all parts of a room. So with computer modeling, it's going to become an important issue to show that if you, if you wanted to have a room that had only daylighting, at certain times in the winter, if people are there after 4 o'clock, you're not going to be able to comply. So you would have to show that there are a certain level of, of um, artificial lighting, which in terms of its design requirement, Occupation Health and Safety has different criteria to the minimum standards on this and there's some green building guidelines as well where you want to try and minimize the amount of lighting and then rely on task lighting or other systems. But anything that you do, you must make sure that if you stipulate, let's say you ask for a 400 lux level, that design lux means that it has to be there and achievable all the time. It doesn't start at 400 and with the depreciation of the globes get to around about 350 over time it's got to be a minimum of 400 for the entire time that that light is required so you do need to make sure that when you're working with with consultants that you do achieve those because I think we've actually got to a point where we've we've lost sight and you know a lot of places don't comply <coughs> 